All right, uh, thank you, Richard Munga, for that uh, sports news. Now we get into our conversation for the night as we talk about uh, online hate speech and efforts that the country is putting in place to be able to tame this particular trend as we edge closer to the August uh, polls. And of course, uh, joining me for this uh, conversation tonight is uh, Danvas Makori, who is a commissioner at the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. Thank you for creating time for us. Thank you for having me. All right, fresh from Nakuru, a great peace concert, I must confess, that yes. you had there. It, it, yeah, it was quite big, actually. And um, we, we were just there for two days for a peace caravan, and then it did a peace concert. It drained, and people still waited until the concert was over, so very good. Mm. Yeah, I had fun, too. All right. Yeah. Perhaps one would ask, uh, what was your biggest take home from this, you know, just coming a few days to the August uh, polls? What is it that... Two things. That one, people are quite enthusiastic about the peace of matters election. Um, they came in throves, especially young people who usually ones are used to cause violence or, or incited. They were. Number two, there's no appetite for violence. I mean, people, I don't think, generally speaking, we've been across the country apart from just community engagements that we do and the community dialogues, the peace caravans, like even read the big concert we did in, Aku, uh, in Akuru, people just don't have that opportunity anymore. And, and, and it's them who are putting pressure, the leaders, to make sure they don't incite them. So actually, it's, it's, it's a good thing, uh, what we have said, actually, ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Makes your work easy as a No, absolutely, <laughs> actually, absolutely. And actually, for me, our country has grown. I think for me, it's exciting to see our country growing. Yeah. The, see, we all, we all say in theory, peace starts with you, but now when you see it, on the ground, people really embracing it, people actually championing peace individually, especially in areas where our country has faced challenges in the, in the previous mm, years. Mm. I think it's a good thing. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, you know, this, uh, you, we, the reason actually we have you tonight uh, is just because two days ago, yeah. you on behalf of the commission, um, you know, uh, threatened to recommend a suspension of Facebook in Kenya and gave a seven day ultimatum. Uh, you know, I just want to understand a bit of a background from this because it elicited mixed reactions in the country, yeah. just hearing that Facebook might. <laughs> be suspended in the country. There must have been something that informed that. Tell us a bit about that. No, there is actually. Um, we have our commission a social uh, media monitoring unit. It's called uh, MMU, or so we call it. Uh, it's a 12 man team that all they do is monitor social media, all of them, social media platforms. Uh, prior to this, we as a commission have chosen a collaborative approach uh, with all media companies, including social media platforms. We met with Google last year, we met with Facebook in April, we met with TikTok, Twitter, and even uh, local media houses, we have a lot of partnerships with, with them. Um, that's why also we, we come to this, because our media is a powerful tool in a democracy, and we've seen it. Um, in that framework of cooperation, one of the things we, we, we do and hope is that when there's an issue, uh, you address it quickly. Now, on the local media, as far as it's concerned, you guys have been outstanding. You're doing a fantastic job making sure there's peace message. Uh, the challenge comes now with social media platforms. Uh, we've had issues whereby when we have um, insightful videos or messages or posts, uh, there's, some, there's some, something called a takedown. They're not being taken down. Um, there's two reports that have come out. Uh, one, um, I think, in June. It was very extensive. It was a story you know, in, 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 the, in, in the Washington Post, actually. Uh, and, and it was, I mean, people were shocked to see, I mean, Facebook had allowed videos, uh, some of them very, very gruesome videos, people being beheaded for six years. Uh, Facebook had become the recruiting ground for extremists in Kenya. Um, this it was planned on Facebook and it's on Facebook. And we've raised those issues, especially with, with the hate speech videos. Uh, there hasn't been. So when the report came the other day, actually, that's what we're receiving. Mm -hmm. um, actually, it was so bad that they really couldn't print or give you media to see what mm -hmm. the post they had put on Facebook. I mean, it was really bad things that Facebook had allowed, okay? So we told Facebook, uh, and that's how we, we had this discussion. I mean, it's high time you do it. Now, my, child, my problem with them, our problem with them is, is, is this. In the U.S., in the US and in Europe, there are very stringent measures in place, what we call content moderation. They will not allow those things there. Mm -hmm. So my question is, if you don't allow it in the US and you're doing it there and in Europe, how comes you're, you're doing it here? There's something called breaking the glass measures. They can, you know how long, I give, we say seven days, you know how long it will take for them to do it? Three hours. 
mm -hmm. I know that. Mm -hmm. So actually, it was very general, like guys, can just do. They know but they but can is do it, it. Is it possible though, and 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 practical to? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah it to, is, to it suspend is. Facebook, uh, considering that it has like millions of users who a majority in other countries, African, in, in other countries, even understand why you're suspending it. In it the first you, you see, it's it's not the way to go. It's not something we want. Mm. Okay, it's not something we want. Uh, it is something you want to do. But uh, we have a mandate to make sure we have a peaceful election. And if a platform is being used uh, to incite and cause, and potentially cause violence, then you must do what you have to do to, to protect that, that, that aspect of it. You understand? So they can do it. See, the challenge, the challenge where we're coming from is uh, they actually can do it. They just kind of choose not to do it because we've not been firm with them like other countries. So why double standard with them? Because they can do it. They have measures in other countries. You understand? In other countries, actually, some specific media, social media platforms have been suspended, specific ones, not all of them, when they violate the, the laws of those countries. Yeah. So why can't they do what they do places in this place? Mm. That's, that's what we're asking. Concerns have yeah. been raised about that, you know, even just yesterday, I believe it was the interior CS, uh, Dr. Fred Matiangi, who in reaction to that was saying we cannot go back to where we've come from as a country, where we are sort of, um, you know, making, going back on the gains we've made in freedom of speech. I mean, is it, is it, is that how you look at it? I don't want to, it's not good for public officials to spot in media. So I, would, I, won't, I won't comment on what he said. Uh, but let me just say this on, 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 on this. Um, my opening statement that day, I started with Constitution 33. Article 33 is very clear. We have freedom of speech. Article 34 gives you, your media houses like yours, a freedom, of course, to broadcast. But there's a limit, it's not absolute. It's limited to one propaganda to war, uh, hate speech and incitement. So there's a limit to the freedom of speech. And it's clear in our constitution. Then our act defines what hate speech is. That's why I even cited it. So I'm a firm believer, I'm the biggest proponent you can find of free speech, the biggest ever. It's sacred, I mean, it's, it's sacred to me if you ask me. Um, but there's a limit. If that free speech is gonna cause harm to people, uh, then we need to check it, and that's why the question put, put given the history of our country, in a sense. So, absolutely, it's just not going back, actually. Mm. It is just pro uh, it's, it's protecting our constitution. All right, yeah. Makori, it's two days into the seven day ultimatum. Any yeah. action points that you can cite, maybe on the, on the part of Facebook, on your part as a commission, or global witness that was part of those who presented this report to you? I don't know, I don't know what the other, had? I don't know uh, what Facebook is doing. Um, we're supposed to be meeting with them this week. Mm -hmm. Um, on our part, we're was, we was still firm on, on it. Um, we still have a mandate. Anything that touches peace is, is our, um, our mandate. Uh, we have a full internal report. So what we're doing right now, we monitor these guys 24-7. So we have a full report. I mean, if you see uh, the, 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 the trash of uh, the trove of data that, that we've collected in, in the terms that the things they do, I mean, it's, it's, un, it's unbelievable. So. On their part, I don't know what they're doing. Hopefully, uh, they can actually um, listen to what we're saying. It was an advice. Just do the right thing. You understand? We, it, and it wasn't just a threat. We're just saying we, we will comment. We don't have a power. It's just a recommendation. So our, our stance is very simple. Just do the right thing because they can do it. So on our part, we are still waiting to hear from them. We'll meet with them hopefully this week. And hopefully, we can resolve this. Yeah. I mean, we've asked for very simple things, very, very simple things, which they can do. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about the uniqueness of the level of hate being spread online. Yeah. Um, you know, why does it seem like every effort that is being put in place to fight um, the online hate speech seems to either um, it's, it's slow in terms of results or it's being, um, you know, it's, it's, it's failing? So there's two things. Mm -hmm. um, a uniqueness that we've noticed also as we do investigations uh, is the fact that a lot of people or groups that actually are spewing hate or inciting, actually a number of them are in the country to begin with. They're in the US, they're in the UK. And that's why, again, we're, we're telling Facebook we gotta do something about this. Because I can't go arrest somebody who's inciting somewhere in Germany. You understand? Um, secondly, a lot of people use pseudo accounts, pseudonyms. Um, to, it, you yourself, today, if you go on any platform, because you're known, it would be hard for you to spew hate but you hide under some pseudonym, you create your own fake account, and you, you push this content. That's part of the challenge. 
thirdly, there is a threshold of now of, of evidence because it, to take to investigate these uh, some some of these investigations we've done take months. But by, by, by the time you investigate, you track somebody, you you discover who they are, and then look for them. I mean, it's months, and take it to the court. The threshold is quite high. That is, on the legal side, it is very very difficult to deal with. Mm. You understand? That is why now, you know, it's 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 incumbent upon the social media companies to do what is right. Even their own guidelines. Do you know that every post that we've had flagged violates Facebook's internal guidelines? Forget about just uh, even their own guidelines. So we're saying, listen, just follow your guidelines. Just do it. It will make it easy. It will make it easy because it, it, you know, it will be blamed. Okay, what is the NCSC doing? But we are, we, that's why we're holding these uh, uh, companies available. I'm uh, sorry, accountable. And I hope they will do the right thing just like the other platforms which are doing the right thing because we, the other ones, they, they have a response. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Talk to me about uh, you know, the, the action plan that the commission launched the other day yeah. and whether in any way, as you take us through the highlights of this action plan, does it address these unique complexities in addressing online hate speech that you've cited tonight? You, you know, actually, uh, I'm glad you raised it because it's what I mentioned it. Um, a few weeks ago, we did launch the national plan against uh, hate speech, mm. specifically because of the challenges that we know. What we've purposed as a commission is to be proactive, not to be reactive. So we put on mission. This is a plan that jointly we work with the UN. Actually, we work with the special uh, advisor against genocide prevention at the UN. Um, and, and within the plan, it's actually and, and it's not just a theoretical framework. It's actually a plan. So we identified stakeholders who can help um, make sure that there is no hate speech in our country or it's completely eradicated. Of course, your media is important. And then we hope within the, the, the plan, the spirit is collaboration. Let us work together. Let, let us work with the KBC. Let us work together with Twitter. Let us work with Facebook. All of us, let us work together. Because they have their duty, their stakeholders, they are responsible, they are responsible for, for that. Now, the, the legal entities like them, of course, have, have a different interpretation of that. But for us, we've chosen to be proactive and collaborative with everyone. All yes. right. Yes. Uh, are you looking only at Facebook or other social media platforms as well in terms of... Which one is more no, 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 we've, 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 Are you we've looking at all, all those Actually, areas? I just got a report uh, on... Fr I get a uh, weekly report on, on um, what's going on on, on, on all stream the platforms. Um, and there is increasing um, use of TikTok uh, also. Um, we met with them about two weeks ago. And they promised to, if there is an issue, is a video that we are concerned about, they'll take it down. Because for it to go viral is just a couple of seconds, the whole thing goes viral. And it's so hard to undo that, I mean. So we do, we do look at them, Twitter, um, the same thing. Um, and and the, the, the good thing is at least there's a response. Whenever there's a concern, uh, Twitter has been very robust, actually, I would say. Not as they're not there what we want to, I can tell you. But at least you can see there's an effort made. They're, the standards they use in most places is almost similar to what they're using here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can see somebody's making efforts and, and, and you give credit to, to, to ASD. And they've been quite, quite responsive. But we are, we are looking at all of them. I mean, that's why we have a unit that is 24 7 monitoring social media. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about it's just eight days to the August polls. Yeah. In terms of somebody has to be held accountable. Yep. Um, in terms of you know, responsibility, what do you tell the politicians? What do you tell the electorate? What is it that they are doing that is a miss? And what is it that they are doing that is a hit? What, who should do what as we Let edge? me start with the, with, the, with the heat. For the most part, at, up until maybe <laughs> this week, 95% um, of the political class in their rallies have been pretty much peaceful. Um, in the news that you did today, if you look at even what you said about what they were saying, yeah. they're talking about issues. So for the most part, they have been doing that. Uh, now we are seeing it generates to personal insults. Now, insults can never win you a vote. And Nilsons, uh, Kenyans are, are suffering. And as you, you talked about, there's, there's a lot of people really going through a lot. So you insulting somebody is not helping. Mm. So that's, that's the, the, the missed part, I, I would say. For the, for the, for the Kenyans, um, I mean, it's a few days. Most of them have made up their mind. We've seen many polls coming up. Um, but it's a sobering thing. I mean, I know some of the really exactly, but I think it's a sobering thing for us as kind of transitioning to a new government. I mean, whoever wins is still a new government that, that, that is coming. This administration is, is gone. I think for Kenya, it's just to, I would say, to admonish them to think, to be sober, uh, to think beyond now, because we are so myopic sometimes and transient, mm -hmm. okay, and think 
20 years from now, our children and their children, what country uh, would they want? Because you do that, then you choose the right people who do a real foundation for now, for, mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the future. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, this is a conversation that we should definitely pick up in the near future. Commissioner Danvas Makori from the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. We were talking about uh, strategies that the country is putting in place to tame online hate speech. You've had him there. A call for Kenyans and to the politicians. My name is Safina Ching Oma. Thank you so much for watching Sand Express tonight. Have a good night and God bless.